Hi, I'm Katie, and this is the 25th episode of Ornamentations, which is going to be a big one. So I hope you're settled comfortably in your chair, that you've got some stitching and maybe a cup of tea to keep you company, because today we will be talking about finishes, about embellishments, about some fabulous, fabulous giveaways, a new winner of the 2000 subscriber Marie Antoinette giveaway, as well as updates on my own Marie Antoinette stitching box with smalls and my casket, as well as a kit launch. The kit for Seasons of the Heart Winter is now available on my website. There's a link in the description below. And I'm really excited to share this with you, so let's start there today. Details on the kit. It includes everything you will need except for the chart. So it includes your ground linen, your silk satin backing used in the pillow finish as I did right here. Back, that's the back, not the front. I'm having to, I think I'm still kind of dead from the flu, so please be patient with me, I'm losing it. And then all of the threads that we use in this stitch, so mostly go ones, although there's one 103, and then it's the Freen and Accentuate meant to be used together for the sparkly elements, which on my own stitch was just the snowflakes and the smoke coming from the chimney, but I gave you Sophine so that it could be block stitched and you could do any of the white elements and accentuate and Sophine for maximum sparkle if that is your taste. Unfortunately, this effect never shows up on camera. I'll insert a couple of photos here to give you at least a slightly better look at it, but it really is a wonderful effect that you're only going to get in person. So think of it as a nice surprise that you'll get while you're stitching your kit. In the meantime, you really are gonna have to take my word for it that it's sparkly and lovely. So I hope you enjoy making that discovery as part of the Seasons of the Heart Winter. As to the rest of the details on this, this is not strictly a one-to-one -one conversion, so all of the details for that are covered in the conversion insert in your kit. Um, I did make a couple of changes. So on this, there are three colors used for the berries in the border. However, I had two that I thought worked beautifully together, so I just used the two for the entire thing. And I think that actually works, that it's very beautiful, but if you do want to use three colors, a suggestion for a third color you could add in is part of the insert in your kit so that you have maximum options to stitch this in the way that you want and to keep everything really flexible for you. And the other thing is on this um, chart, there are actually four greens, but one of the first things I'm doing when I'm working any conversion, not just this one, is I look at what the colors are and what they're doing in the pattern. And here I noticed that it's how they relate to each other. There's always a lighter green and a darker green in any of the elements. There are never three used at once. So I thought it would be okay to use just two, a lighter and a darker across the entire pattern. And because these are both beautiful, beautiful greens, some of my personal favorites, again, I thought that worked, but there is a suggestion for a third green if you do really wanna add that again. Again, I don't think it's necessary or it would be in the conversion, but I'm not everybody, so I want to give you options if that's something that you're interested. But your kit includes a red and a pink, and then two greens, as opposed to all of the colors that are called for in the chart. And the conversion insert in your kit does explain this in detail, so you're not left guessing about what goes where. There is also information on a private page on my website with detail shots, retail sources for the beads, if you couldn't get a bead finishing kit and you are interested in it, where you can buy those yourself, quantity needed, etc. All of that so that you can follow my stitch as closely or not closely as you would like because I did make a few other changes as we discussed in the previous episode, leaving out the red bird right here, 
the small trees by the house and then I also stitched all four trees at the top in the same darker green rather than doing two different greens there. I thought that was just a more streamlined look. So I often do compress colors in a conversion because I like that more cohesive look and here the colors are so bright that I didn't want them competing with each other having too many shades. So I think this is the perfect balance of bright, happy, fun, colorful, but not too much. And that's why I'm really fond of this conversion. I think it was quite successful. So some other details. Interest on winter has seemed to be really high, so I am assuming that this is going to sell out on the stocked kits. After they do, if they do, um, I will take pre-orders for one week after the stock kit sells out and I'll pull up the end date in the listing so that you know how long you have if you're trying to decide on a kit. And then after that, the kit will be permanently retired and I will not be releasing the conversion in the future. All of my floss tube kits are going to be one and done because as one person it's just not feasible for me to maintain a constant stocking and shipping operation basically. So this is Seasons of the Heart Winter which I think is just beautiful. I absolutely love this and I loved stitching it because of just the utter lusciousness of these colors. This has got to be one of the prettiest silk packs I've ever put together. I can't get enough of this and I hope you like it too. So the actual details. It is $76 for the basic kit of thread and fabrics with of course all the information that you'll need and then it is $112 for the kit with the finishing pack which consists of a beading needle and beading thread to stitch it as seen in my tutorial for beaded loop edging and then all of the two millimeter crystal moonlight rounds that you'll need for this finish. This does look like a laughably tiny amount of beads but I assure you I have double and triple checked this is correct. It just looks really puny. <laughs> so you do have enough in here to do the beaded loop edging and also some extras. In the event of loss, they are really easy to drop and very difficult to find once they're on the floor. And if you'd like to add extra beads to your finishes, so some places where you could do that would be the doorknob on the house. I did that for Seasons of the Heart Spring. And then also in the snowflakes. So here on my stitch of Merry Old Soul, I have added them into the center of the small snowflakes just as sparkly little accents. You know me, I can't ever resist a little bit of bling. So you have the option to bling up your kit as much as you would like. However, the beading packs are quite limited. I couldn't get as many beads as I liked. Thus, the information on retail sources on the website if you wanted one but you missed out. A couple details on the finishing, so this applies generally to everybody, not just those who buy the kit. One, the importance of blocking. So I stitch my cross stitch smalls in hand and that require, that results in a great deal of distortion with block stitched elements such as the house. I'm sort of photo, but this was really quite on the diagonal. It was very, very noticeable and then as you can see it's fully been squared out by blocking everything's now in line. Blocking is one of the easiest ways to make your finishing look much more professional, smooth and you know just, yeah professional is really what I mean by that. And then the other thing that I did is I stuffed with wool roving because well I always stuff with wool roving but I wanted this to have a firm but kind of flat look to it so it doesn't look like it's under stuff but it's also not bulging out and that's achievable with wool roving so I stuffed the whole thing I closed it up and then I put it face down on a towel on my pressing board put the iron on um, silk or polyester setting not too hot you don't want to scorch the silk and then I squished it down with my iron to really flatten it out, which you can do with wool roving. It will hold the shape you put into it. Polyfill will just spring back up. It has that kind of natural resistance, which wool roving does not. It's malleable in that way. So um, winter aside in the kit, 
my top three tips for finishing if you're not satisfied with your finishes as is would be number one use Monofifer's tutorials which are excellent number two block your finishes before you do the finishing before you back them actually it's all covered in the tutorial I think and then number three stuff with wool roving because it will really improve the appearances of your pillow finishes so one last look at seasons of the heart winter which oh I have to tell you this was a joyful joyful stitch just because the colors were so beautiful this is the perfect use of silk because um, you get all the saturation the luster and the shine of the silk thread with this color combination so I really enjoyed it I hope that you will too if you're interested in seasons of the heart winter and with that we'll get on to next thing which is I have to apologize to you all over the mailing list um, technology is not my friend and it's quite frankly amazing that a disaster like this hasn't happened before but I have been telling you for quite some time now that there would be an ornamentations mailing list that would notify you of kit releases like Seasons of the Heart Winter. After I filmed and uploaded the last time I started to work on the newsletter for this, I looked at the list and I realized that the button was not sending the signups to the right list. They were all going to the main mailing list. So some of you who may have been expecting an email this morning did not get it and I am so so sorry about that you'll have to go back and re-sign up on the form which is now working I can confirm because I can't see on my end which one you meant to sign up for and I can't move the emails around again I'm so sorry about that I'm extremely analog and yeah I'm sure something like this was bound to happen but I am no less embarrassed about it on a happier note, and a more stitchy related note, as I mentioned last time, I am going to have my mom on sometime soon, maybe in August. That's my floss tube one year anniversary, and I think that'd be a really fun way to celebrate would be to have her on. And um, you guys suggested a lot of great questions and discussion topics in the comments in the last episode. I'm keeping a list. If there's anything to add to that, if you didn't watch the last episode or if something has occurred to you since, please do continue to suggest things you'd like us to talk about or that you'd like to hear from my mom, who is, well, I was going to say she's my doppelganger, but it's really more accurate to say that I'm her doppelganger her daughter she's the original right so um, I'm taller and my hair is much brighter but this is my mom as a young child and this is me at a very similar age it's really quite uncanny when I see photographs of her as a child because she looks exactly like I did at that age only you know the hair is wrong and I have Sunday gloves on and an Easter on it because yeah that's not actually me it's my mom but <laughs> it really I think probably will be quite striking to see the two of us together on camera and anyways please continue to suggest questions or discussion topics because that's really helpful for me I have another question for you today too which is when do you start fall stitching I will need to get the threads ordered for the next floss tube kit in any event, but um, as summer, I wasn't going to really say wanes, I guess drags on and we all get really exhausted with the heat. It seems like more people are turning their attention to fall stitching. I usually do that in season, so that was my plan for the next floss cube kit. But, you know, some feedback on when you like to do fall stitching and when you'd be looking for a fall kit would actually be really helpful to me. September maybe we'll see some of it will depend on how long it takes to get the threads of course and then before we get to my finishes I wanted to share a special gift that I got with you because this is just lovely a friend sent me a natty pin natty pin from Minnie McBean's needlework for free so you can get these at the attic and I just loved it. This is great. I love the charms and of course that little red heart is just great. 
and I decided when I saw this, it was a total surprise, I wasn't expecting it at all, that I would make a project bag to show it off, and of course it had to be red. This is Red Silk Fay, which has a lot of body to it, so it doesn't need interfacing at all, which is great because silk doesn't take fusible interfacing well. And then I used this lovely William Morris Strawberry Thief in a very vivid colorway for the interior because those birds are the perfect red to match the exterior. So thank you to the giver, you know who you are. I love it and I made a special project bag just to have a home for it and oh, it's great. So it really kind of matches Seasons of the Heart Winter so if you want to do one yourself that would be great. And um, so with that we will get to my finishes. And the first is my continuing adventures with Silk Wrapped Pearl. I discussed this last week, but just to recap quickly, doing a series of ornaments from Modern Folk Embroidery, one with a briolette edge. Second one has a Silk Wrapped Pearl loop edge with beads inside every loop. This is Silk Wrapped Pearl size four. And then my latest is a lighter red and a smaller color, size two. And this is my finish. So the smaller size obviously gives a different look, but I also um, stitched it down a little differently. So the length of the cut is the same. These are both 3 eighths of an inch long cuts. This is tightly drawn into a loop this is more of a scallop shape. It comes up and then stitches down a little further apart than it does here. And that and the thinner um, silk wrap pearl is part of what gives you this effect. So when I was doing this, my initial idea was to thread silk chenille in and out of the loops for a little kind of like woven looped effect. I tried that and it just looked lumpy and unfinished to me. I think the idea could still work, I just, the loops weren't quite right, they were a little too big, spaced too far apart, so I'm going to try that again and see if I can make it work. This is usually how I figure things out, I just start, I go with it, and then I adjust as necessary. That didn't work, so I decided to fill the space instead by stitching down beads in between the scallops, which I think makes a really nice detailed edge. Isn't that going to look beautiful on a tree? I think that's going to look beautiful. I'm really pleased with this. I love this one too. I actually, I can't choose. Do you have a favorite? What's your favorite? Please tell. So the next phase in this is that I'm going to move to, um, same pattern, modern folk embroidery through the bitter frost and snow, but with greens with Katie's screens actually, so I hope to have a, ne a new one to show you on the next episode and hopefully get towards a tutorial before much longer. I am, as you can see, I'm still experimenting. I think three eighths of an inch is the right cut length if you want to try this on your own. It's basically the beaded looped edging tutorial, but instead of threading on three beads, you thread on a length of silk wrap pearl three eighths of an inch in length. Also to know about silk wrap pearl, core is wire, it will nick the blades of your scissors. Do not use your dobos, your kohanas, or any good scissors. You always want to use a crappy pair of scissors where you don't mind damaging the blade. So if you want to experiment before the tutorial goes up, it's actually quite a fun thing to do. One other thing that I haven't tried yet that I really want to experiment with is that silk wrap pearl can be stretched and then you can leave it like this or even more interestingly you can fill this with a contrast thread you could put swallow ball down the middle of it in a second color or a contrasting color or in the same color it just would give slightly a different look and really the things you can do with this are endless it's a thread that you just kind of have to play with and see what you like my other finish, for, well actually my other cross stitch finish I should say for today is what I started for the last episode. So I asked you from the charts and the linens I showed, what did I start? 
and there were a lot of guesses none of them were right you guys all guessed the larger projects i was recovering from the flu small was good so my pick was winter salt boxes on druid blue which i absolutely love and this is my finish working on such a saturated color was quite an adventure i had to adjust several of my color selections i initially went for a white for a different red 945 which actually looked quite garish on the druid blue i will post the conversion in the description if you're interested in stitching this yourself and then i also had to change the green from what I had initially chosen, but I think it turned out beautifully. I'm so pleased with it. And I will stitch the second one also on Druid Blue, but I haven't done anything on Irish Coffee yet and it's calling my name. So I've decided to put Winter Salt Boxes aside for now. Before I do, I have a finishing question. I really need a second opinion on this because I think I know, but I'm not sure. So. My original thought on this was that I would try a beaded edge like this, but with a slightly different type of bead. So this is a briolette, which is basically like a round little donut. There's something called a roundel, which is the same shape, but with a knife edge. Not sure if this is gonna really show up, but it's a beautiful bead. This is just the plain crystal one. I love these, and I think for a beaded edge, it would be beautiful but i'm not really sure if this needs anything more i think this might be complete as it is especially because i left off the border and just did the interior scene so what do you think bling or no bling i can't believe this is even a question because usually in my world the answer is always bling but hmm i'm kind of thinking no bling bling this is almost unprecedented in my world so Next on deck is a stitch on Irish coffee. It's going to be one of the charts I showed you last week, if anyone wants to have a guess which one it is. And in the meantime, another chart showed up, which I am gonna use with Irish coffee. This isn't what I started. This, uh, Brenda and Laura showed this. I saw that, I was like, ooh, that's meant to be with Irish coffee. So this is Brenda Gervais, Bittersweet and Broomsticks. Look at that. And it gets even better if you think about, and I can't hold all these together, with, oh, oh, this trim. I finally found what I'm going to do with this trim. This is perfection. Better sweet and broomsticks, Irish coffee, trim. Meant to be. It's happening. Doing it this fall. Maybe earlier than fall. I'm really excited to start. All, all the, oh, everything I showed last week, I'm still itching to start the squirrel brain has not abated at all so i have to start on irish coffee it's not better sweet and broomsticks and i will be sharing that with you next time i'm really excited i think it's going to be great so with that we will move to the marie antoinette sewing box so if you're not familiar with this project, I bought an antique box. I ripped out the interior and I'm going to replace it and fill it with little smalls. It's meant to be a stay-at-home sewing box inspired by the Sofia Coppola film Marie Antoinette. All the beautiful colors and it, it has such a visual aesthetic, right? So these are the smalls that I have already done. A scissors case featuring Katie's greens and a little pincushion. This is one of the bands from Jane Marshall finished as a pincushion with some crystal trim added to make it look like a little cake. Very Sofia Coppola, I think. So these are the smalls that I've done, although they're not the only smalls that I'm going to do. And then I started working on the box. I ripped out the bottom lining. I'm having real trouble ripping the paper out. It's like wallpaper and they super glued it in. I'm gonna have to actually chisel this out. Miserable. So my idea was I would make a posy to put in the lid. So 
in the movie there's a period where she's got these silk flower almost corsages kind of swooping by her neckline so I thought something in this shape would be kind of just a neat little call back to the film and oh also I just love make pose love making posies let's be honest here so I think that would be great and I started one in more Marie Antoinette colors to coordinate with the smalls I've already made these are my silk colors these are Trebizond aren't these luscious these beautiful and then crystal colors rose and light rose to go with it and then this is what I have so far I'm not done so I'm gonna have a couple of different colors of daisies and then the buds and the leaves and it's gonna be kind of a swooping shape inside the lid Oh, I think that's going to be beautiful. And then I'm also thinking about the color of the interior. So my first thought had been that I would do something kind of blue-green to go with the silk color that I'm using here. But I've been wondering, since pink is the supporting color, since the film is so colorful, that um, pink might actually be the better color here. Think about how much that would pop on a pink ground. So. I don't know. I mean, some of it is going to be decided by what I actually buy. I have to, Mom, we have to go to Brightex because I need a lining fabric. So what I can find will certainly be part of it. And I do have some options in stash. So hopefully next time I can show you a completed posy and also the interior options. But in the meantime, if you'd like to weigh in on the plank, pink versus blue debate, you know, very sleeping beauty, the old animated version, pink, blue, pink, blue. But <laughs> Sorry, I ran a plot. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. So that's for Antoinette. And then the last finish that I, sorry, there's a helicopter flying really low. Can you hear that? You can probably hear that. The last finish I have for you today is on my casket. We've seen this before. And when I last showed it to you, it was mostly complete, but missing soldiers. And I set this aside for quite a while because I had a color dilemma. And this is very similar to the color dilemma I faced on blue skin. So how to make certain elements stand out and how to make others recede into the background and not compete with the standout elements was something that affected obviously the choice of the leaves so that they wouldn't compete as discussed in part two of the specialty thread tutorial. And then making the stripes on the flag gray instead of red as in the original pattern. That worked here and that was the same kind of question I was wrestling with on my casket panel. So the threads that would have been easier and possibly more logical to use were the grays seen here because they there were such interesting textured op options that would be really cool in stitching these figures. But I thought the taupey sort of gray, really mostly taupe options that I have here on the bottom row would make them more background elements and that's ultimately what I went with here. So this is the completed panel and then these are the soldiers. So the foremost soldier, they're a group of three. If they were all worked in the same colors, they'd just be a blob, especially when you look a little further back. The lighter color on the frontmost figure brings him forward a little bit without pulling your eye away from the visual focus of the panel, which is the conflict between Brynemart and Malacasta. So the brightest color is the most texture and dimension. The greatest theory of shine are all there to draw your attention to them, but the figures here are taupe in the background so that they're there and that you don't have a visual hole here, but that they're not competing with the main focus for the panel. And that, I think it was actually quite successful. I'm pretty pleased and yeah, I'm done. And then you also have some ways that the colors connect to each other. So the body of the pheasant and then the uh, plate armor on the two background figures, it's actually the same thread. Looks very different based on what's around it, right? And then this is the same round to kind of create a triangle between the bedpost, dark, 
brown on the pheasant, and then the verticals here reflect the vertical of the bedpost, kind of tying the whole composition together and to tie the frieze to the main panel. I think it's reasonably successful. I hope it's successful because, oh boy, I'm ready to be done with this panel because once this gets mounted on the box, I only have the back left to do and then I will have a finished casket. Not anytime soon, but one day. And then this is the back of the panel so you can see how much was worked separately and then applied to the front, between front and back. I also took regular progress photos so, and I have clipped them together into a video which I will insert at the end of this episode so that you can actually watch this panel come together stitch by stitch, layer by layer. So this works up much the same as any large stitching project, just one stitch at a time. The real art of stump work is knowing how to layer things together. But more on that another time. So that's my progress on the Britomar casket. I'm going to mount it on the box after this because I'm really ready to be done with it, let me tell you. And then that brings me to the last thing I have today, which is giveaways. So first, new winner for this 2,000 subscriber Marie Antoinette giveaway consisting of the book, The Private Realm of Marie Antoinette, the silk pack, and the macaron needle sharpener. The new winner for that, since the previous one never contacted me, is Char J 57 Please contact me. I've commented on your comment and I would love to send this out to you, especially because seriously, if I keep this much longer, I'm going to be really tempted to just keep it. Silks are luscious. And then today I have new giveaways, the first of which are the very gracious gift of a viewer. This is Teresa of, her handle is Jersey Girl Stitches and her company that she started with her daughter is Jersey Girl Stitch Co. I'll put all of the details in the description. As you probably saw on Brenda and Laura last week, they've started making counting pins. These are the ones I chose for myself. They're called a walk in the park because they are Marie Antoinette colors, look at that. Perfect, I love it. And I thought it was especially fitting for Marie Antoinette because of the pearl heads on these. So Marie Antoinette loved pearls. I mean, she wasn't unusual in that most rich people of that time did love pearls because until Mikamoto pioneered the culturing of pearls in the 1800s, pearls were the ultimate status symbol. They were gram for gram, the most expensive gemstone on earth, considerably more expensive than diamonds. They were so rare. So yeah, she loved jewels, but she really loved pearls. So I thought that was very appropriate for the Marie Antoinette box. So those are mine. These are a walk in the park. And then I also have two sets for a giveaway today. The first is Lady Isabel's Garden, and the keyword for this will be garden. And the second is spring at Woodlawn, and the keyword for this will be spring. So to enter the giveaway, please don't use the word giveaway, use the keyword in your comment, and then I'll use the random comment generator, to, random comment picker to select the winner before the next floss soup. So check back on August 2nd to see if you won. And then from me is the 3,000 subscriber giveaway as I crossed 3,000 subscribers this weekend and I wanted to celebrate with all of you. And thank you for watching me, for supporting my channel, to listening to me blather and commenting and all the wonderful things you have to say. I love reading them. So. There was so much interest in the Marie Antoinette giveaway. That was my highest commented video ever. But I really felt quite guilty. There was only one winner and I decided for the 3,000 subscriber giveaway, I would have three winners for 3,000 subscribers. And this is my giveaway. I made three beaded fobs. Um, can be used either for scissors, for project bag, or for general bling. They are incredible incredibly sparkly. You're seeing a little bit of that on the camera, but in person they absolutely blaze with light. So I thought, what a better thank you than these fabulous blingy scissors fobs as my gift to you as a thank you 
for watching my channel and supporting my floss too. I really am so grateful for all of you. So the keyword on these is going to be red for the red fob and then crystal for either the crystal fobs. I'll draw two winners on those. So again, to recap, all of our keywords, red, crystal, garden, and spring. And if anyone manages to use all four of those in a coherent sentence, gold star to you. I look forward to seeing you all rise to the challenge. If you enter, be sure to check your notifications on August 2nd to see if you won so I don't have to hunt you down. So that's the giveaway and that's I think pretty much everything that I have for this episode. Next time I'll be back will be Tuesday, August 2nd. I'm back on my regular filming schedule so for that episode, we will have the giveaway winners, all five of them, some more finishes, my new start on Irish coffee, which I'm so excited to share with you, and lots and lots of sparkle. It's going to be a very special episode, and I hope that you'll join me for it. But until then, happy stitching. <laughs>